She was caught by me catching a text at my daughter's birthday party come in that said, I love you more. When I asked what that was about, she said it was a co-worker she's been helping. Because we had all our family and friends there, I didn't push it. Later, the next day, she came clean and said that she's been in a relationship for six months. This was back in October. She refused to tell me who it was with or what they've done. I was devastated. Absolutely destroyed. Still am. So we spent some time apart and she continued her relationship with him. I did some digging in the meantime and looking at the phone records it was our son's coach. I called her out on it and she still continued the relationship. I saw a lawyer and he told me to not leave the house or the kids and either try to work it out or time to leave and to see a therapist. My therapist says she's a narcissist and that I should protect myself, protect my kids and run. Come December, she said she had cut it off with him and wanted to try again. I gave her all the effort in the world, but I don't feel like her soul's been in it. She's not overcompensating or has even truly apologised for what she's done. I've also gotten access to her photos. I'm the admin on the family Google account, and she doesn't know that I've seen all I have. She framed a picture of him and had it, maybe still does, at her desk. I found naked selfies she sent him that I haven't even received. I found a picture of his naked ass in our beach condo, which I thought was natural space, as we were nothing sharing it during our time apart. I slept on those same sheets. I know that she was at a fancy restaurant with someone else. She screenshots all these deep love quotes that I know aren't about me. So much that love's rent-free in my head. She has a white bracelet with one black bead that she now wears every day. I've called her out on it. She lied once and said it was from her mum and up to last week said, well, my best friend has the matching one. Well, her affair partner wears an all black one eighth one white bead. I know what that represents. Again, she doesn't know I've seen all these things. So now to current day, I can't place it find anything that suggests that she's still with him, but I know she used Snapchat often and is secretive with her phone. Whenever I bring up the affair this blow up, because I said I'd try to not bring it up and get over it, but I simply can't. I'm not rubbing it in, but it does come up when we argue, which is almost every week. We do really well for a bit, up to and including intimacy. But then something happens and we go back to shit. She cancelled our babysitter for trivia this past Tuesday and for this Friday where I got tickets for us to see a show. But she doesn't want to go because I can't get over her affair. Her parents, mom and stepfather, both cheated on their spouses for each other and support my wife and both call and text me that it's unfair that I bring up her affair. The pictures of him life rent-free in my head, almost constantly. I can't get past what she's done now, matter how hard I try. I don't know what to do, as she's trying to make me the bad guy. And I'm like, I've been here the whole time. I didn't fall in love with someone else. I just don't understand and am an emotional train wreck. Update. Welp. Long story short, I literally just caught her at the family condo with the AF and have photos and video of his truck, his belongings in the home and her coming out of the master where he stayed behind a closed door. I also went into our shared car that she drove and it was left unlocked in the parking garage with an open high noon on the cup holder and her wallet and belongings still in it. She came home and tried to talk. It was calm conversation, but she kept saying it was my fault. And if I communicated with her last night, I grey rocked her. Maybe she wouldn't have been with him. So I communicated that I'll be home later this afternoon, evening. So she's unexpectedly watching the kids today. I wanted to hang with them as she took them away from me yesterday to go do activities. And I would do separate activities today. 
However, I'm not emotionally able to give the kids the best of me right now, and I definitely don't want to be around her. I asked if she could sleep in a kid's room, and she got upset and stated that our bed is her bed, and she will sleep where she wants. I said, obviously. I've been for a six-mile walk already and have been calling and leaving VMs at all the lawyers around. I know I can't abandon the home, but I can't be around them. After what I just saw. Thank all of you who responded earlier this week and suggested Grey Rock and 180 for me. I implemented them and I guess it drove her to this, but I'm officially divorcing her and there's no going back. Legal counsel told me to no contact her, so that's what I'm doing. She texted me last night all about how she hasn't asked for a second chance, even though I've given them, and she loves me, and she now is willing to do therapy and share her locations and access to her phone and can't see rocking on the porch with that AT. Yada yada. When I got home last night, she was in the master, so I slept upstairs. This AM, no communication. She wouldn't even look at me. Yesterday, when I caught them with video, I saw his hat, and it noticed it was a local landscaper, so I called to see if he worked there. He does. Okay, thanks. That was it. This MF just called me, saying if I want to talk to him, here's his number. Don't call my boss. I said, I have nothing to say to you. He replied, and I have nothing to say to you, and hung up. Also, her mum reached out and said how I must be devastated and she's so sorry and to call her when I have a chance. I'm going to continue my no contact with everyone and let my lawyer, once I secure one, do all the talking. This is so damn hard. Update two. I'll keep this one short. So she love-bombed me, confessed a lot of what she's done. I fell into it for a few days. The sex was great. Then we had a tiff last Friday and we've basically been no contact yet living under the same roof. She got into my Google Photos Act and deleted a lot of the evidence ID collected from her and videos I had, but the important ones were backed up, literally trying to hide and cover up her affair. I have an appointment with my lawyers this Friday and we will go from there. I've been running, house shopping and trying to stay distracted. It's very hard. I have a lot of emotions and sadness. I lost my best friend and lover to another. I know I need to keep saying it's her loss, and it will be, but it all still sucks. Especially hearing her tell me all she's done. Horrible shit. I don't want to get divorced, but it's what has to happen for my own self-respect and happiness. I can never, ever trust her again. Update 3 show where to start well first off i did it i officially filed for divorce and she has been served she has less than two weeks to respond quite literally the hardest decision i've ever had to make and to be 100 percent honest i still don't want to but i know that it will be what's best for me my soul my anxiety and my mind over the past month we'd have good days and bad days Tension was always high, and it turns out she still kept lying about him. I got a hold of her phone again, and she had shared locations on Snap with him, and when we were supposedly trying to make it work, she wouldn't even share that with me, her husband, and I had asked. Oh, and she changed his name in Snapchat so I wouldn't know it was him. Multi-levels of deception. She also had changed his name in her contacts to throw me off. Sucks for her, I know tech well, and I'm a bit smarter and clever than the average bear. On her birthday, we weren't getting along, so she chose to go spend time with him in the evening while I hung out without kids. Didn't tell me, found out by searching her phone for his name. That same day, she'd been texting her best friend and literally told her I was being annoying and said, why don't you just divorce me, to her regarding me. In arguments, she'd text me to divorce her because I would express how I was unhappy and am struggling trusting her because she's been so shady. 
Everything from blocking me on Snapchat, because she didn't want to see my snaps was her reason, to a crazy phone screen cover, to changing the lock code on our car. Both names are on it, but it's primarily hers. Just really odd shit, and then would also try to love bomb me and have me just go along with everything and be a good family man. More recently, on my birthday, I made the poor decision to go out with her. Absolutely, we had a lovely time till something triggered me and her affair came up, and we started arguing. It escalated up to the point where I was recording her on my phone as she was going nuts, and she straight up hit me in the side of my head knocked my phone to the ground and we tussled over my phone, all recorded. She called the police, no charges pressed, and I was told to sleep upstairs, which I did willingly. The next day, she filed a protective order against me and I couldn't reach out to or see the kids, or her, which was a okay, for a week. I couldn't even be in my own home. She did have the kids call me every day, which was very nice. During that week, my lawyers convinced me the best thing to do, especially for custodial reasons, was to file as it supersedes the restraining order. So I did. At the court hearing she was served, and knew it was coming the night before as her friend is an officer and it's public record. In front of the judge, she said that I was no threat to her or our children, and that I'm a great father. She also stated that I'm allowed to freely come and go at the house and anywhere else I chose as I'm not a threat and she wants me to see and be with the kids. It's in the transcript, so I'll use that in the custody battle. We will and have talked about 50-50, but it's good to have in case. So the judge basically said that this was all a waste of time. And now, because the restraining order has to be extended till we divorce, it's all null, except that I'm not allowed to threaten her. Not like I ever have. Or would ever do. I've moved to a family home which has room for me and the kiddos. They have their own room and beds, as well as toys, books, and everything else they could possibly need at this home. And we're splitting time with them. She expected me to make a 40-minute drive in the morning to look after the kids until 7.30 so she could go to work. But I made it clear that if they stayed with us overnight, we would take care of them no matter where they were. She fought that for a bit, but I showed her I have a pendate light order ready to go. And I could just take the main house 50% of the time and displace her, and she calmed down. So that's about it with an update. She's trying to win me back again, but I've now caught her four times going back to him, so I can't give her another chance. I want to, but I know I can't. I can't trust her. It's the hardest thing in the world. I break down crying randomly. I and am terrified about the future and how it will all work out. I hate that she chose him over me and tries to win me back telling me how much this is hurting her and all that jazz. And it's like, well, maybe you shouldn't have had a ducking year-long affair. An affair that was first discovered by an I love you more text. Maybe you shouldn't have given my engagement Schwarch wedding right back twice. You chose him. A one-time thing I could have recovered from and forgiven but to go back time after time after time after time and hid it all and did all the things I know she did, ugh, it's too much. I'm choosing to break up our beautiful little family and it kills me. However, I have to stand up for myself and I know I could never trust her again. She keeps asking for time to heal, but she keeps going back and getting mad at me for bringing her affair up when we bicker. I can't help myself. That mother ducker lives rent-free in my head all the time and almost everything reminds me of her infidelity. She chose him over me and now will suffer the consequences. It just sucks because I'm suffering greatly too. Don't get married, folks. I'm sure more will come to me, but I'm just having a hard time and needed to type this all out and get it out of my head. Update 4. 
So for the past month, I extended the divorce response to the 9th and coincide with the lifting of the protective order. I know it's been a dangerous move, but she was literally begging and pleading for another opportunity. My heart couldn't tell her no with the tears streaming out of her eyes and all the words she said. She's a phenomenal actress. This whole month, we've been happily cohabitating with minimal issues. No major fight, no yelling, nothing that could happen to affect the order. We dated, we've been to concerts together, we've been intimate many times, we've joked and it was going very well. However, I was always hesitant as I feel like the relationship has been hollow, not a lot of depth, and of course have concerns who she's texting, snapchatting and all that jazz. She had previously deleted Snap, but reinstalled it without telling me, but insists the AP is blocked. She also refuses to take off her super dark screen protector or allow me to go through her phone. All things I've asked and she's given excuses about. We did a session of couples therapy that was horrible. We rehashed all the bad stuff and it made for a very awkward day after. Super uncomfortable. I've gone to two personal therapy appointments and she hasn't tried to find one for herself at all. She booked a family trip for us four to take the kids on a plane again and have a good time in a big city. We also had a vacation planned for this holiday weekend. But because of recent events, I'm no longer joining and I'm deeply saddened by that. Remember, the protective order has been and still is in place this whole time. This past weekend, we went to a local town celebration with the kids and had a decent time. She was affectionate in front of her friends we met up with and all in all, had a lovely afternoon drinking plenty of beers, always a trigger for possible not good times, and enjoyed ourselves. After we went out to dinner and while walking in, she took our son and was rushing ahead. I was with our younger daughter and said, hey, can you wait? So when I started moving with our daughter, she continued ahead, maybe 10, 15 feet or so. I again stopped and Lauda said, hey, can we walk together? And started to walk, so did she, not together. So a third time I said, hey, I want to walk in together. Why are you not answering me and walking away? She replied, oh, I thought we were together and then finally let up catch up and we went in all holding hands, found a table outside and sat. We've been separated. These friends of hers knows about her affair. This was the first time we've been out with her friends trying again. It was important to me to show us as a collective, and now two pairs. I explained that to her as we sat down. Her retort? Ugh, you're making it a bigger deal than it needs to be, and you're ruining our evening. I replied that I'm trying to explain to her why I was upset so I can get over it, but you're dismissing my feelings. She just repeated that I'm just trying to pick a fight and am ruining the evening. I excused myself to the bathroom to walk and let off steam, and when I came back, one of her friends came to the table. I just sat there, trying to not escalate anything. In my silence, she decided to then ask what was bothering me, and I said I already explained that and I don't want to discuss anything with her friend there. She then, again, got loud and said, you're just ducking, ruining the evening. Duck you and held up her middle finger. The kids haven't heard that word, seen that gesture, or heard one of us directing it so blatantly to the other. He friend said sorry for disturbing and got up. The kiddos had their dinners at this point. I said I'm going for a walk and strolled around the building. When I got back to the table, she was furiously texting her phone. I asked who she's texting. She said her best friend about a ball game or some nonsense. I said, show me. She actually opened her phone and handed it to me. I opened up Messenger and she had texted the friend who was just there that I'm pissed at her for not giving me enough attention. 
I called her out on that, stating you literally just lied to me and you lied to your friend about why I'm upset. You're refusing to recognize my why. She snatched her phone away, and I willingly gave it to her. I'm not playing those games anymore. So she just says, when the kids are done, we're leaving, and I agree. On the ride home, she tried to record me again, so I talked. Calmly and respectfully again, explained why I was upset, and that her lying right at dinner is concerning for all the other things she could be lying about, and how it's upsetting that she speaks poorly about me to her friends. She shuts down when she's upset, so I also explain that I want to give her her space. We've communicated how we can best treat each other when we fight. So when we get home, I would get on my bike and go downtown for the evening. And that if she wants to talk to reach out and I'll come home. We get home, I go inside to just the bathroom and I come back out to the kids in the garage and her tearing off in a car. Remember, we'd been drinking, her tolerance is way less than mine. I asked our son if mommy said where she's going. He said, the beach house. That's where she escapes to and has had her affair partner there a few times. So my mind immediately jumped to bad conclusions and apparently I'm wrong for that. I said, get in the car. So they popped in and I called her. Surprisingly, she picked up, and I said, you better turn around right now. She said, no. I said, look behind you, and there I was. I said, if you don't turn around, I'll call the police for intoxicated driving, and you'll get your third DUI. She hung up and turned around. We were maybe two blocks from the house. She parked, ran inside. Kids and I get out and play for a bit. They then wanted some TV time and they crawled into the bedroom where she was and I said, OK, cool, I'm going out for space. Went out, ate dinner, came home, there were all passed out in the bed. So I went out again, ran three posty three miles, came home, went upstairs, showered in the guest bathroom and fell asleep in our daughter's bed. The next, and I wake up hearing the TV downstairs and hung with the kiddos, got them dressed and breakfast while she slept. She got up, got dressed, and started to run out the door. I followed her into the garage and said, Where are you going? She said, Walmart. I said, You just get to dictate when you leave without telling anyone? She said, Yep, and left. She came back very quickly, came in and asked the kids if they wanted to go with her. They did, and they all left. While out, she texted me that I was being aggressive and she was trying for space. I replied that if she uses those words, I can be around. She again called me aggressive. So I got in my car and went out for the day as I refused to be aggressive and legally can't towards her. In the afternoon, I came home, gathered some belongings and left for the other house I stay in when we're separated. Lots of texts were exchanged, and her coming to the conclusion that I won't be able to get over her deeds and her absolute refusal to pay attention to my needs. She's pop in some texts, shat she should have, and wants to try to, and that I can't always bring up the past, I'm like two months ago isn't the past, and really feeling like she's shifting blame on me for being upset at her actions. It's always that. I get upset about something she did or communicate my feelings and she doesn't think they're valid and I just need to put it in the past. Hell, she told me I'm giving up on the relationship and didn't try to make it work. That we would have if I simply talked to her Sunday. So I told my lawyer to move forward again and stayed away. Monday, our lawyers talked, and long story short, she's offering the lift the protective order as long as I give up rights to the house for separation. She refuses to split time here. Kids stay 100% and her and I split time while staying at other homes when the one is here with the kids. So I'm being forced out of my home unless I want to test if the judge will extend the order for her. Again, 
We've been cohabitating well, just celebrated nine-year anniversary. And now she's flipping the script and using the system to her advantage. I type this while in the family home. My family is off on the vacation since I shouldn't be around her when she can simply say that I've been any sort of way and get arrested. I hate that after all this, I'm being displaced and she gets to use our home in whatever way she wants. Hell, she already has. She's showing her true colours and it's so deeply disappointing. I'm getting hurt all over again and feel everything is being stripped from me, even though I was the faithful one. I feel like that was our last horror, as she's finally taken off her spare wedding band that she's worn while ducking him and she hates when I bring that up. And again, straight up has told me she will use the system to get what she wants. It's all so disappointing and such a deeply painful process and I feel like I'm the bad guy. If you've gotten this far, thanks for reading. Sorry for the rant. I'm going to try to enjoy my alone time and vacation because the next few months are going to be hell. Happy fourth, y'all! Edit. Yes, I know I've been an idiot and I know that my continuing to try with her has caused me more pain. I think I post these updates to hear how much of an idiot I have been and to get reassurance that I'm doing the right thing. We have lots of keyboard warriors out here with valid opinions, but until you've gone through this pain, you don't truly know. I want to share my experiences so that other may know that they, cheaters, don't change. And it's not worth it to keep getting you heart and soul stomped on. But it's not so easy to simply cut off a spouse. Well, at least for me it's not, but it's happening. I just had to give it all I had and I learn new lessons and share them here each time. Yes, I know I've been a wet rag. Yes, I know I've done too much for her. Yes, I know I seem weak, but it gets easier every time.